today 2.1 complex numbers. So today we start talking about imaginary numbers. So let's talk about the imaginary unit i. i is defined as the square root of negative 1. Therefore, when you square both sides, i squared should equal negative 1. Next, a complex number is the set of all numbers in the form a plus b i with real numbers a and b and the imaginary unit i. So a and b will be a real number. Remember, a real number is anything but an imaginary number. So pi is a real number, square root of 2 is a real number, etc. So the first thing we're going to do is pretty basic. We're just going to practice adding and subtracting these imaginary units. So here's a complex number. Notice this is standard form. It goes real number plus imaginary number. So you want to make sure when you answer, you answer in standard form. So we're just adding these, or in this case, subtracting, because we have this. So we're going to remember that when we subtract, that goes to both quantities in the parentheses. And so we end up with negative 7 plus 5i minus, but double negative. So it's actually going to be plus 9 plus 11i. And then we combine like terms. So in math, there are two ways basic ways to simplify. We can either combine like terms or we can cancel factors. So in this case, because we don't have any factors, this is standard form, we're just going to combine like terms. Negative 7 and 9 makes 2 and 5i and another 11i makes 16i. Notice I didn't write it 16i plus 2. That's because standard form is to write it real number plus the imaginary unit. Okay. The next one, negative 2 and 4 makes 2, and 6i plus negative i makes 5i. So we could do that one real quick. Next, we're going to get to multiplying, and that's going to bring this into play. In math, i squared is written as negative 1. You don't leave it as i squared. Okay. So what we're going to do real quick. Again, just multiply. Use that distributive property. Pay attention to your signs. This is 12i uh, minus 6i squared. 6i can be rewritten as negative 1 based upon our definition of above. And then when I do the math for that, I get that this is going to change signs. And so I get in standard form 6 plus 12i. Moving right along, we are going to do part B. This is a FOIL, so just make sure you distribute properly. So we get negative 24. That's from that. And then we're going to multiply those plus 72i. Multiply these two negatives, make it positive, plus 12i. And then multiply these, minus 36i squared. We are making sure that we realize i squared can be written as negative 1. So we get negative 24 plus, these are like terms, so I'm going to go ahead and combine those. 84i minus 36 times that negative 1, which is positive 36. So 36 and negative 24 makes 12. Since that's my real number, it's going to go first. And then we simplify. Uh, so we got 12 plus 84i. Okay, conjugate. Hey guys, we've already done the conjugate. This is just called the complex conjugate because it involves i. Whoa, what's so cool about the complex conjugate is you have a plus bi, a minus bi, and you're like, hey, Wolken, that looks like a difference of squares. Shouldn't that be, we're going to just do a squared minus bi squared because when it was a plus b, a minus b, we did a squared minus b squared, and I said, yes, that's what we did. But then we take it a step further and see that this would be, shower the power there, and what is b squared equal to? Or I'm sorry, not b squared, i squared is negative 1. So what's that negative times that negative? That helps us arrive here. So it's the same stuff, but because it involves an imaginary unit, we have that negative 1 and we get b squared. All right? So this says simplify, aka rationalize the denominator. Wait, there's no radical. Oh, wait, 
there is. I is defined as the square root of negative 1. So because there's two terms here, we actually need to multiply it by its conjugate. So 4 minus 8i and 4 minus 8i. And then because both of these factors, because there's multiplying between them, uh, have more than one term, I'm going to put parentheses around them. And now I'm going to just do the math. So I'm going to get 12 minus 24i minus 16i plus 32i squared all over. And I'm going to use this right here. So you may want to FOIL that out just for your own information, but I'm just going to do, I noticed that difference of squares pattern. So I'm going to do 16 and then I'm going to do minus 64i squared. If you want to just go to 16 plus 64 because you know that that's what's going to happen, that's fine. But I'm just uh, trying to tie it into what we already know. So uh, this right here is negative 1, and so is this. I like to write that in there like that. So I'm going to have 12 and negative uh, 32, which is negative 20. And then I have negative 24 and negative i and negative 16i, which is negative 40i. And then down here, this ends up being a negative and a negative. So 64 plus 16 would give me 80. And then hopefully you're noticing here that this is not the most simplified form of this answer because we can reduce this. And so uh, there's two ways to do this. And again, you're practicing. So I'm going to start it out like this. This is the first way. You can split it into two fractions with that common denominator. So it's reverse common denominator. 80 was the common denominator. I'm allowed to split it between those two uh, terms in the numerator. And this would give me negative 1 fourth minus 1 half i, or you can write i over 2. So there's the one form or one way you can do it. But we could also do this. When we're right here, instead of going up to that part, I could take out a 20 and get negative 1 plus 2i. Why is it a plus? Uh, it shouldn't be unless I took out a negative in the beginning. So I'm just going to fix that up. It should be a minus. Um, all divided by 80. And so then now can you see your common factors right there? It would be uh, 20 goes into 20 once and 20 goes into 84 times. So that would give me negative i minus 2i over 4, which is also a good answer. But you also remember that AP test likes to put things in different forms, should recognize that it could be written like this. This is a 1, not an i. I just want to clear that up. I just noticed that. That's a negative 1 minus 2i over 4. But then if I pull the negative 1 out, it would also look like this. So any of these three answers are all acceptable for that. So you should recognize that there are three different ways to write this. All right, next definition, principal square root of a negative number. So what this is saying is if you have a negative under a square root, it's written as b times i. Here's the reason why we can tie this into something we have already know, which is if you have negative b, we can write that as negative 1 times b. But we learned way back in the very first lesson of this class that you could also write it like that. You're allowed to, when you're multiplying and dividing, split it into two radicals. And what is the square root of negative 1 rewritten as? i, and then b, and then we have the square root of b. So you can do that. So look at example 4. The mistake that students make on example 4 is that they actually, um, they just multiply right away, which you don't want to do. In math, mathematicians decided if there's a negative under the radical, the first step is to get rid of the negative under the radical. So this is actually, I'm going to break it down for you. i root 25 times i root 4. And then what's the square root of 25? That's 5. So you have i times 5 times i times 2. So you end up with... Let's just keep this going. 
5i times 2i, which is 10i squared, which is 10 times negative 1, which is negative 10. So again, the mistake, the biggest mistake that I see students making, so I'm going to write mistake so that you know it's a mistake, is that I see this, which is good thinking. I applaud the thinking on putting it under one radical, but because we're progressing in our math, we need to follow the rules of the people before us that um, have been established, and this is one of the rules that has been established, that if you have a negative under the square root, the first thing you do is get rid of the negative. You don't combine it. So this is the mistake that students tend to make. Negative 25 times negative 4 is 100, therefore this is 10. But these two things are not equal, so don't do that. Get rid of that negative of the root first, and then go from there. Okay, so even right here, once the negative is out, I could have taken this and done i times i is i squared and then combined these under the root and we would still have gotten the right number, but this we can't do. Okay, so let's take a look at this over here and try and put some of this into practice. Again, I need to get that negative out, so the easiest thing to do is just get the negative out by putting that i out there. But then, you remember, in our class and in most math classes, leaving a perfect square under a radical is not appropriate. So we are going to do this. This is 4 times 2. Square root, square root. So that's square root of 4 is 2. So I have 10i, because 5 times 2 times i is 10i, root 2, plus, this is 9 times 2, square root, square root. So this would be 9i root 2. Hey, we have numbers with the same radicand, so they're considered like terms, so we can combine this into, this would be 19i root 2, and that is where we would be done. What about something like this? What do we do? Well, first step is to recognize what it means to square something. It means you have that quantity, that entire quantity, twice. So you definitely wouldn't shower the power here. Uh, this would be a plus sign and you would be, a uh, puppy would be uh, hurt if you did that. So what you do at this point, you have this, and then you're going to go ahead and change this according to what we just talked about, that principle, square root of a negative number property. So we get to there, and then we get to FOIL. So we get 4, and then we get minus 2i root 11, another minus 2i root 11, and what is i times i? So you got to slow down when you come to this. This is i squared. And then root 11 times root 11 is 11. So let me show you the math off to the side for that real quickly because you have i root 11 squared is what you have when you multiply those together. So then that gives you i squared and root 11 squared and the square undoes the root. So that's why it's that. Okay. So then we get... 4 minus 4i root 11. Again, these have the same number underneath the radicand, and since uh, we're adding and subtracting, those are like terms, so I'm going to combine them. And then i squared can be written as negative 1, so I end up with negative 1 times 11, which is negative 11, and then just putting it in standard form. 4 and negative 11 makes negative 7, minus 4i root 11. Um, some people will write this like this, negative 7 minus 4 root 11, and then they put the i on the outside, which is fine. Just be very careful with that. Make sure that radical doesn't extend over the i, because that would imply it's part of the radicand when it's not. So just be very careful with that. Okay, moving right along. This next one right here looks pretty intimidating, but it's okay. We got this. We're just going to break it down step by step. We don't give up when things are challenging. We persevere. Um, just a really important skill to have. So here we are here. It's like, okay, we got that. So then what happens next? Oh, perfect square under here. 7 and 4 make 28, and the square root of 4 is 2, so I get negative 12 
plus 2i root 7 over 32. And do I have any factors that can cancel or terms that can be combined? So no terms that can be combined, um, but factors that can be canceled. I'm just going to split this up into my two fractions because it's reverse common denominators. It's just an easier way for me to simplify or you could factor, and then we would get negative 3 eighths plus i root 7 over 16. Or I can take it from here and watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to be tricky. I'm going to factor out a negative 2 this time. I didn't do that last time, but I want you to see it, so I'm doing it this time. So this would be 6 minus i root 7 all over... 32, and then because this is being multiplied, it's a common factor with that. And then the negative out in front, I am just going to tag along the fraction bar because that's what most mathematicians would do. Uh, and then we would get this. And you can see that 6 over 16 would reduce to negative 3 over 8, but in terms of correctness, this is written as two fractions, and this is written as a combined fraction, so they both are equally um, correct. Alrighty, that brings us to our very last problem. It just asks us to solve, so I'm guessing we're going to get some sort of imaginary number. So we have to, we see this is a quadratic, so we get one side equal to zero. You know my preference is to always get my leading coefficient to be positive. Uh, we have our a, b, and c once we're in standard form, so three, negative four, and six. You can't do this until you got that equal to zero. So then little quadratic formula, x equals negative b, and because it's already negative, it's going to be positive. Uh, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. I'm going to go ahead and extend my radical so I get all of my radicand all over 2a. Okay, and now at this point it's just a simplifying 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 minus 72. Look at that. I don't know if you remember this. This number underneath the radicand is called the discriminant. You can see it's going to end up negative, which means I'm going to have two imaginary solutions. If it ends up being positive, I have two real solutions. And if it ends up being zero, then I have one real solution because the square root of zero is zero. And this is over six. And so then just keep my little simplifying right along. That would be negative 56 all over 6. This is, uh, when I do this next, just using that principal square root method, I'm just going to put the i out front. Some people can do this all in one step, and that's fine. Uh, you can do this part and the i in one step. But I just want to be very clear. Uh, 56 is 14 times 4. I'm looking for that perfect square. And then at this point, it's your choice on how you want to simplify. Do you want to factor out of the numerator and cancel? Or do you want to split it into two fractions? So I am going to split mine into two fractions. So when we simplify, we get i root 14 over 3. And then if you were to choose to do it the other way, which I already have outlined on my paper, we get the same thing, just written in, as a single fraction, as split into two fractions. That's all for today. Until next time.